All right. For today's critical thought, we are returning to the topic of gotcha design. Now, I talked about this a few months ago, but with my new smartphone in hand, I got to experience it firsthand over the last week. And do I have some updated thoughts to talk about? So, if you are new and you don't know what we're talking about, gotcha design is, or gotcha pun, is essentially a slot machine mechanism typically seen in free-to-play and casual games, especially on the mobile side of things. Now, what's very interesting is that gotcha and loot boxes are very similar in terms of their design, but there's a few subtle differences. With a loot box, how it works is I give you money and you tell me what items I could possibly get. Again, this could be a range in, you know, common, rare, super rare, legendary, so on. I get the, I open up the box and I get one of those items. Could be something rare, could be something common, but I have a pretty good idea of what I'm going to get. Gotcha, on the other hand, it's integrated more into the design and actually becomes a part of the gameplay or the game systems itself. In this case, I give you my money and I basically pull a slot machine. I could get something completely common, I get something massively legendary, but again, what I get is completely up in the air. Now one area where gotcha does differ from loot box is that many free to play games will feature multiple forms of gotcha. You could have a common or low tier one, you could have your expensive mid tier, and then there can be special event gotchas, you know one month anniversary, uh, a seasonal gotcha, a legendary one that can be only accessed if you can be a dungeon. And these gotchas are usually tilted towards either rare or even very limited items or units and may only be around for that specific event. But regardless, you as a player aren't given 100% idea of what you're going to get. And there is a lot more in terms of randomness behind the scenes that impacts things. Now, one area that is certainly different from uh, comparing gotcha to loot box is that gotcha design is typically a form of progression. And that is a very big point. Because when we look at most games that feature loot boxes, be it everything from Overwatch, Team Fortress, Payday 2, Killing Floor 2, and so on, the items themselves are either going to be cosmetic or very small in terms of their buffs, such as what they did with Payday 2. Overkill after all the hoopla that was raised over the safes microtransactions last year will never put another skin together that will flat out give you a huge advantage. But Gotcha is built on this. And this is one of the reasons why gotcha design is so addicting, which we'll come back to in a minute. But in just about every game out there that features gotcha-based design progression, it's usually framed in terms of stars. Most games will feature 1 to 5, sometimes a special 6 or a special star that denotes a higher quality. But these games are usually about you acquiring gear, the gear itself is going to be hard-coded along with their rank. And this is a very big part because it has to deal with progression and balance. And this is one of the major reasons why gotcha design is so addictive, is that it streams, streamlines the decision-making process. Do I have to look at multiple skill pages and descriptions and weigh the different numbers? Or do I just say, this item's 3-star, this item's 5-star, this one's better. From a balance standpoint, it makes it a lot easier when you're fine-tuning numbers. What is typically done in gotcha-based games is that the different stars or rarity tiers will denote a range of power. So let's say a 2-star item or hero whatever can only be spawned at uh, power level 500. That's the max it can appear. A 3-star could have a max of 750, 4-star 1250, and so on. The beauty of this is that it makes it a lot easier when it comes to balancing and scaling new content. 
because all the designer has to do is say, okay, we're going to make this new item. It's going to be a three star. So let's go to our design Bible. Three star item must have a range of 250 to 500. There we go. We don't need to spend too much time trying to fine tune the values when the game is essentially doing it for it. And of course, like I just said, when it comes to scaling, the beauty is because of the star system, it's very easy to grow things. Because let's say in a year and a half from two years from now, everyone has four and five star units. Let's make our new six star tier or seven or eight. And again, using the same kind of scaling, we just keep growing it up and up and up. Now, Gotcha Design is featured heavily and almost exclusively in abstracted based systems. Again, your RPGs. And that's a major point that we're going to talk about next. But when it comes to Gotcha, let's go over why this is so addicting. Like I said, the first major reason, it streamlines progression. I can see what I have, and there's always that allure of that next star up, or maybe getting lucky and getting a five star hero or whatever as a reward. The second aspect of why it's so popular is that it allows for many, many different kinds of monetization avenues. When we talked about before when it comes to pay or wait, pay or wait is the idea of energy i.e. everything I do costs me energy. When I'm all out of energy, the day's done. The problem is that you're basically paying money to keep playing, and it's looked obviously very unfavorably. But when it comes to gotcha-based design, it's looked at as, I'm giving money, I can get something amazing. And of course, the parallels to slot machines is pretty apt here. Because you can go to a casino and say, I'm going to spend money, but maybe I'll hit the jackpot and become a millionaire. And that's the point about Gotcha, is that these systems are refined to a point to keep you playing and to hit you as a many different ways to get you to spend money. And the example that I want to talk about is from one that I'm playing, or actually two, Idle Heroes and Summoner's War. In Idle Heroes, obviously your heroes represent the Gotcha-based system. 1 to 5, with a special 6 star. In order to level up a hero, here are the number of resources you have to deal with. So first you use the common in-game currency of gold. There's a second level up currency that must be used to power character up at specific uh, bench points or uh, sections of leveling up. You then have to spend a third resource in order to upgrade their tier with of course that resource going up in value each time you get to those breakpoints. But then if you want to level them up further, you're going to need access to a fourth resource, which is basically collecting heroes in order to uh, sacrifice an altar to level up your heroes to a six star ranking. And of course, every time you level up a hero, all the respective resources go up in value. So what that means is, there is at least, in terms of actual resources, three different ways that the uh, developers are getting you to spend money because you have to buy each one of those resources. In Summoner, Summoner's War, there we go, we have leveling up your characters, sacrificing to boost them, runes that have to be equipped to raise their stats, which also have to be boosted, a special resource that must be grind in special dungeons in order to awaken your heroes to upgrade their class. There's specific scrolls that are used for different gotcha pools. And again, the rabbit hole just gets deeper and deeper. And then some of the bigger ones, such as there's a Final Fantasy game, there's not just the one or two base gotcha. There are limited time gotchas. There's a special one that you can pull one time for a huge reward. The same goes for Puzzles and Dragons, so that frequently makes use of limited time events that if you beat them, you get to pull a super exclusive gotcha. I know, uh, for those of you watching this, please don't have a drinking game of as many times as I'm saying gotcha. In this video, you'll all be passed out. But, 
Another major point about why gotcha is so popular and addictive is that it becomes the sole form of progression, and that is very dangerous. Like I said, in these games we are dealing with abstracted systems, so you as the player don't have real control over whether you win, and if you have any control in the game, it is always superseded by your gear. If I'm using 5 star gear, it doesn't matter how good you are if you're only using 2 star. I will beat you every time. I could probably play with my eyes closed or in games that allow for some control I could just go like this and be controlling it off screen and I will beat you every time. And that is very troubling because in this case Gacha is literally pay to win distilled into a game system. Because all it takes is for you to get one level 5 or in the games that have it higher, level 6 star rank whatever, and you are going to be at a colossal advantage. Oh, but wait, there's more. Here's where things get very insidious. I've been talking in terms of one unit, but it's never one unit in any gacha based system. In Idle Heroes you have to build a team of 6. In the Final Fantasy game, it's not just about collecting heroes, you have to collect gear, and special ability orbs, and special augments, and I'm sure there's even more down there before my eyes started to glaze over. So take the normal progression, or take this heightened level progression, and times it by 5 or 6, and that's not counting if the developer again decides to add more to it. And this is why it's so, it's as addicting as it is terrifying for a player. Because the only way you're going to make real effective progress is to spend money or the game's premium currency. Doing this without spending money, it is going to take a ridiculous amount of time. As we talked about before, gamers will value either time or money more importantly, but it's important to present both in terms of equal value. If you just skew heavily towards time and make money very easy, then the game is viewed as pay to win. And that's what a lot of these gotcha based games can be accused of. Especially when you see stuff like a $99 purchase and you're not even buying anything of note. Again, when we go back to DLC, I hand you money, I know exactly what I'm going to get in return. With Gotcha, you are just getting pulls of a slot machine. It could be a high quality slot machine, but it's still a slot machine. So there's a chance that you could spend $99 on a game and get absolutely nothing of value. Of course, these games will feature ways of milling or recycling resources into something else. But it's not the same as saying, I'm going to give you $10, you're going to give me a new quest or a new set of heroes. And the fact that it is random is very troubling. As we've talked about before, the percent chances of getting this stuff, in most gotcha based games, it's not readily known. There have been pushes in China and other countries to make it illegal to hide that information. And when you see it, it is just disheartening. Like I said, when it comes to random progression, it is entirely random which means you can have someone on their very first pool or their very first set get 5 star heroes and blaze through the game. Or you can get nothing but 2 and 3 stars and now you're in trouble. In Fire Emblem Heroes for instance, it actually reveals what the percent chances are and when I saw 4 different gotchas and a 5% chance to get a 5 star hero, I just un uninstalled the game because that was the sign that I knew this is just going to be a colossal time and money sink. And that again is the issue when it comes to gotcha based designs, especially when progression is built on them. Because you are basically 5 star or bus, because that's how these games are balanced. They're not going to balance the content so that anyone with 2 star quality stuff is going to get through it. No no, they want you to get at least 4 and ideally 5 stars and that is going to take a lot of doing. And like I said, when you combine this kind of gambling with actual progression and have it meaningful in game, 
it just becomes a very addictive and dangerous combination for as we've seen before with whales and people who suffer from gambling addiction. And it's definitely something that I'm not a fan of. With Summoner's War, Summoner's War, I'm going to keep butchering that at some point there, I just hit that point where I was like, oh my god, am I going to have to do all this just to make a little progress? And that's th that point where I'm just like, I don't want to do this anymore. And I'm starting to hit that area with idle heroes as well. But this is the problem with gotcha design. If it hooks you, it's going to earn a lot of money. But it basically hamstrings any other form of progression. As we've talked about, when you start throwing in abstracted progression like this, how much does skill become a factor? For most of these games, it's not. It's just entirely built on gotcha based principles. And eventually, something's going to either the player's going to run out of money, or they're going to run out of a reason to keep playing. And my eye is certainly going to be on the new South Park game, Foam Destroyer, which is going to be a PvP-based title. Because I'm very curious to see how they're going to handle Gotcha, and how they're going to, again, balance time and money without just becoming a matter of whoever has the biggest check account wins. For those of you watching this, what do you think about Gotcha-based systems, and can you think of a game that handles it right? Now, I still want to talk more about loot box design and some of the games that have gone that route, but we are about 16 and a half minutes in, so we'll wrap it up here. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new, be sure to like and subscribe. Let me know if you have suggestions for future vlogs, but otherwise, check back for daily discussions on game design here and on game wisdom, where we examine the art science of games. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. For my writings as well as weekly podcasts, check out game-wisdom.com. For ways of supporting Game Wisdom and get access to rewards such as VIP status, as well as voting for the Saturday Night Grab Bag, check out patreon.com slash GWBicer. You can follow me on Twitter at GWBicer for my daily thoughts as well as updates as to what's going on. So thanks again for watching. And be sure to check out our next video coming real soon to the channel.